Hey guys, welcome to another episode. So today we're taking a look at the really easy way to make your models more dynamic and uh, allow people to play around with them and, uh, and figure out the best option to move forward. We'll look at the scenario where we have an acquisitions pipeline. So we're planning to acquire a few companies and uh, we want to be able to, to see how our numbers would look like with different combinations among those companies. One way to achieve that is to build different scenarios, but another way to make it more dynamically is to have those like yes and no switches in Excel that would let you include and exclude various uh, companies from your uh, summary presentation. By the way guys, if you're enjoying the content, thumbs up will be awesome and a sub to the channel will be amazing. Okay, let's go ahead and fire up Excel. Here in Excel, I have four tabs with uh, our acquisition target, so EdFX Limited, Acme, Upper, and Boring. And uh, what I have here is the net revenue, operating expenses, EBITDA, non-operating expenses, net income, and I've already copied this. And uh, just gonna use the same format for our summary. Let me just add our formatting here. And I want all those to be numbers or from here. So one way to do that is to have different scenarios, including all those in different periods or just excluding some of them and so forth. But uh, this would require us to duplicate this sheet numerous times. And every time someone wants to see what it would look like if, let's say, we acquire Boring a year later or something like that, it would require to rework the whole summary again. So what I usually do is I'll have a config section here, and this will have the status for all of those. Just underline this, and here I have Boring, Upper, Acme and Edifix. And I also want an underlying uh, line here. All those, I want them to be a switch between yes or no. So I'm gonna go to data, data validation, and I want to allow a list, and we can just type in on off. And now all those would have a drop down to be either on or off. Let me just select the whole thing, type in on, control, enter to fill the whole selection. Let's just change one to off. Now let's style this one a bit. So I want all those to be centered, I want to embold it. And I also want it to be more visual. So I'll add some conditional formatting rules. Format only cells that contain cell value equal to on format and I want it to have a light green fill. Okay, grab the whole selection again, new rule, cells that contain equal to off. And I want this to have a light like reddish color. Okay, now it's really easy to see which ones are turned on and which ones are turned off. And we're gonna use those to basically determine if we're summing here or not. So let me just switch this one to on and uh, let's start our formula. So equals if, I wanna go through all of those. So if this, I'm gonna fix it with F4 and I'm only gonna fix the row. So when I copy it down here, it always takes the same row from here for the status. So if this is equal to on, I want to grab boring uh, limited net revenue. Otherwise, I want it to be zero. Plus another if, go back here, if this, I'm gonna fix this with F4 again and it added the name of the sheet, which is not really a problem for our purposes here. So I'm just gonna leave it here. So if this is equal to on, I want upper limited net revenue. Otherwise, I want zero. Plus 
go back to the summary view and I clicked here before I entered the if formula. So I'm just gonna delete that. If, okay, the row for Acme Limited, fix that only on the row is equal to on, then give me Acme Limited's net revenue. Otherwise, give me zero plus if tap to open the function. You can see it up here. Go back to some review. If it fix, equal, forgot to uh, to fix that. So I'm just going to delete the equal sign and two times F4. If this is equal to on, just grab it fix net revenue. Otherwise, grab zero. And this is our formula. We can easily copy that to the side and uh, it's going to work across the board, grabbing the revenue from here. And we can do a quick check. So let's go with uh, with uh, calendar year 2023. So we want boring for 2023 plus upper 2023 plus Acme plus Edifix and we get the same number so our formula is correct and we can actually copy this move it to the side and we can see that our formula is correct so what we can do now is if we just copy this from here and bring it down here it actually should work because we're moving two cells down on our references to the different sheets but our reference to the uh, status stays the same because we fixed our row number. Okay, copy this to the side. And then this is a sum of those two. Okay, and uh, let's do a quick check. So boring EBITDA plus upper EBITDA plus ACME EBITDA plus Edifix EBITDA. Is the same number so our formulas translated correctly from net revenue to operating expenses which means that we can just go ahead and copy this to non-operating expenses because we use the same format uh, of our structure so our net income will be the sum of those two and uh, that's it that's our whole summary view so what this approach gives us is that now we can go ahead and discuss okay what happens if we decide that we're acquiring Boring and Upper this year, but then Acme will acquire in 2022, and just by switching this to off, this is reflected in the, in the sums here, and it shows us the actual performance of the other three, excluding Acme. We can then go ahead and decide that Edifix we're gonna acquire in 2023, so we can switch this one off and we can see how our EBITDA and net income uh, look like. It's a really simple concept, but a really powerful one at the same time because it allows you to have a ton of flexibility in your models. And you can apply this to pretty much everything. You can even have uh, different uh, assumptions being taken based on different status or different setting or something like that. There you have it, a really simple yet powerful and a very effective way to introduce uh, this additional flair of dynamic to your models. Hope you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you did. Also don't forget to subscribe if you're not already and maybe even punch the bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. Till then, thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.